The nation of Italy confirming more than 650 deaths today. That number is actually down from yesterday, but still, it's very high for a daily fatality count. The nation now issuing new restrictions, shutting down everything de deemed non-essential. Senior foreign affairs correspondent Amy Kellogg is in Florence, Italy, with that. Amy. Hi, John. Well, it's hard to imagine really how they could make the lockdown here much tighter. The country has been in shutdown for about 10 days and the north for more like two weeks, plus some additional restrictions that have been put in place even before then. But as you mentioned, yes, now they have uh, banned everything. There were some factories that were still working. They've stopped all that all but the very, very essential things that need to be produced for strategic or health reasons in this country. And the police, John, are checking on people. Uh, another order came down for people to no longer travel between cities and for people in the north to no longer go out for sports, exercise, even for a solo jog. Now, to try to boost patient spirits, a doctor took out a megaphone and announced to, that the whole of Italy was with those patients and then piped the national anthem. While is one of the worst hit countries in the gravity of all of this, it's considered the third after China and Italy. The U.S. offered to send help, but in his Persian New Year or no ruse address to the nation, the Supreme Leader rebuffed the offer. You Americans are suspects of having produced this virus. I do not know how real this accusation is, but when it exists, who in their right minds would trust you to bring them medication? You know, this, John, after a Chinese government spokesman had suggested that perhaps the U.S. Army had brought the epi uh, epidemic to Wuhan. Of course, there is a lot yet to be learned about coronavirus, but all of the mainstream medical journals are uh, supporting the fact that this or the likely possibility that this evolved from bats and you know, the animal to human food chain. And, you know, it's it, no one is going towards that conspiracy theory that this was a manufactured event. Uh, finally, you did mention that Italy had a slightly lower death rate today, and that is good news. Uh, but our our fatality rate is at 9% at this point, And a lot of people are trying to figure out why it has been so high. The message from these overwhelmed medical wards across this country to the rest of the world is look at us as an example of what happens when you wait too late and you don't have your hospitals well stocked and backup doctors waiting to jump in when and if crisis hits. John. All right. Thanks very much. Amy Kellogg from Florence. So as the crisis stretches on, we are starting to see cities adapt to help coronavirus relief. Seattle is building tent hospitals in fields to brace for what could be a spike in the number of coronavirus cases. Dan Springer is at a soccer field, which soon will be a hospital for COVID-19 patients. Dan. Yeah, John, earlier today, President Trump approved Washington State's disaster declaration, which will help in freeing up some much needed federal aid. Also, overnight, we had the largest one day jump in new cases, 269 new cases and 11 additional deaths. So they are scrambling to create more hospital beds. And that's why they are building these field hospitals like the one behind me built on a soccer field. When it's all done, they'll have 200 additional hospital beds for people infected with the coronavirus who cannot be quarantined at home. It will hopefully slow down the spread. Now, these are going up in several locations as King County plans to create 3,000 additional hospital beds in the coming weeks. The number of cases has tripled in the last seven days and the number of deaths has more than doubled. Public gatherings, meantime, were shut down first in Washington State and it's led to severe job losses. Unemployment claims in the food service industry are up 600 percent as many restaurants have closed, but we are seeing a fair number of uh, companies adjusting to a drive-through carry-out business model and it's helping feed the people in the in the public obviously and keep some workers getting a paycheck one business that could take off right now is an, a new way to sanitize airplanes and airports using ultraviolet light hospitals have been using uv light to clean operating rooms for decades an orthopedic surgeon came up with the idea for his germ falcon he calls it as a way to reduce the spread of the common flu on planes but he said it will also kill the coronavirus 
It's deadly when it gets into people, but its susceptibility to ultraviolet light is very similar to the MERS and the SARS, we presume, because they're genetically very related. And so we know that if it, the ultraviolet light can kill their cousins, it'll kill them too. Alaska Airlines is testing this germ falcon at an airport here uh, locally, Payne Field in Snohomish County, and uh, this thing could spread out across the whole country and make those planes safer to fly when people actually get back to flying. John? Yeah, let's hope that is soon. Dan Springer. Dan, thank you.